Brandon from Top10Gamer.com here, and this is the second installment in our best graphics cards for the money. Today we're going to talk about the $200 segment, and we're going to go all the way up to $250. Now within this market, there are several different graphics cards that you should be looking at. The RX 470, the RX 480, the GTX 960 are probably the main ones that people think about. But you also got the 4 gigabyte and 8 gigabyte versions of the AMD cards, and the 3 gigabyte and 6 gigabyte versions of the NVIDIA card. Beyond simply just the graphics cards at this price point, you've got to go worry about DirectX 12 and how important that's going to be going forward. And uh, I would say that it's very, very important. And while there are relatively few games right now that have DirectX 12 and that we can bench with DirectX 12, it's going to kind of be what we use going forward. Now looking back at DirectX 11, benchmarks for that are very important right now as well because we're still playing a ton of DirectX 11 games. And DirectX 12 games, the ones that will have the most benefit, are the ones that are built from the ground level up. And there just aren't that many of them. So going forward, you're going to have to decide, hey, am I going to be playing a lot of modern titles with DirectX 12 or not? For that reason, let's take a look at the current and upcoming games with DirectX 12. Here's a list of DirectX 12 games, both released and upcoming. And I wanna point out that Star Wars Battlefront supports DirectX 12 and upcoming game Battlefield 1, uh, which should be here soon does. And it's gonna be very telling to kind of look at the beta here in a few days. Now I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna get on the beta, but, it, but at least it could be very telling to, to try to see what kind of performance impact the DirectX 12 will have. Now keep in mind that EA as a developer worked with the low level API mantle a few years ago for Battlefield 4 and should be very experienced in implementing this. Um, even if DirectX 12 doesn't have much of an impact on Battlefield 1, I, I would assume that as games are built from the ground up, again I'm going to say that a few times this video, built from the ground up with DirectX 12 it should make a bigger and bigger and bigger difference. Let's take this article by Tweaktown done back in June 2015 as an example. Here we have Far Cry 4 in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. And they've turned up the AA all the way up. But what they've done here is they separated the uh, VRAM consumption with AA applied and AA disabled. A super, really good test. I couldn't find anything more recent that really gave this type of information. But this should give you a good, of, good idea of what we can expect going forward. Now, remember that Tweaktown had to find these particular games. This is more of the exception than the rule. I wouldn't say uh, in general that games use this much VRAM, but it is important to show that as we go forward, developers are using uh, more and more VRAM. Here you can see in 1080p and 1440p what we're most concerned about. Uh, with AA on, you're going to use up to 3 gigs on Far Cry 4. And uh, in 1440p, that's, uh, you know, you're going to use 3.7 gigs of VRAM. So uh, this tells us a lot. First of all, it tells us, that, you know, as we go up in resolution in this game, we're going to use more VRAM. So that's important to remember as well. If you're going to play at 1440p, you're probably going to want more than three gigabytes VRAM. If you're gonna play in 1080p, it looks like it's just gonna be just on the edge. But going forward, hey, you know, uh, if developers are gonna use it, you're probably gonna want it. Uh, let's keep look, moving on here, Witcher 3, wildly popular game. <clears throat> and uh, as you can see in 1080p, it only gets up to about two gigabytes of VRAM, uh, even in 1440p, about 2.2. So, so in this case, you know, three gigabytes would have been enough you know obviously this is a very demanding title and this shows us a lot let's move on to battlefield 4 a more normal looking title for this type of thing and uh, without the aa we do find under two gigabytes of vram and with aa we uh, we crawl just over it so uh, moving on to metro last light you can see that it's not a problem at all in any of the resolutions a shadow of mordor this is definitely what I was saying is uh, another kind of exception game where the developer uses a lot of VRAM. Uh, we're gonna have, you're gonna have to have a lot of VRAM for this particular game. Uh, 1080p. Look at this. Even uh, even without AA, it climbs up over three gigs of VRAM. So 1440p doesn't help you out anymore. 
uh, reaching nearly five gigabytes on 1440p. This article from way back in 2015, an eternity in the hardware market, clearly shows that we're gonna need more than three or even four gigabytes of VRAM going forward in 1080p. And while it's clear that developers plan on using more than your typical two, three, or four gigabytes of VRAM in their games, it's pretty unclear how graphics cards will react when uh, we simply don't have enough. So what I put together is a little bit of a montage from around the web of some graphics card benchmarks that I've found. Now, these are not mine. I've put all the links in the description below to the various articles, and there's about five or six, and if you're serious about purchasing a graphics card in this price point, it may be well worth a look beyond this video. So let's take a look. All right, you've taken a look at the benchmarks and I know a lot of you are expecting a surefire answer from me on which graphics card you should purchase. So I'm just gonna say the things that I feel like I know so far. First of all, I feel like in Direct, Direct X 11 games, the Nvidia cards have the clear advantage and in some titles, a very steep advantage. Okay, that's not gonna go away. Uh, for Direct X 12 titles, I see AMD making up a lot of the ground. But one thing I wanna say about DirectX 12 going forward is that a lot of this seems to be sponsored titles. I mean, clearly Ashes of the Singularity was a AMD sponsored title and something that right now we should kinda of take with a grain of salt. I'd love to have 10 or 12 DirectX 12 titles just to put in front of you uh, and, and, and give you a better conclusion. But unfortunately, my answer for this today is you're gonna have to use your own judgment as to who you think will truly be the winner out of these going forward. A couple of other items to be aware of in your decision making process. First of all, the GTX 1060 does not support SLI. So if you're a person that likes to buy a graphics card now and then two to three years from now as that kind of gets old, buy another card for even less money to kind of keep your system going for a while, that's not a possible, that's not a possibility if you go with the GTX 1060. On the other hand, if you're looking for energy efficiency, the GTX 1060 will win hands down. 
So that's our discussion on graphics cards in the $200 range. I wish I had a definitive answer for you, but really it only gets more complicated from here because you could be looking at the GTX 970 or the R9 390 in this topic as well. You could be trying to find a used card. There's really all types of considerations to make. What kind of resolution do you plan on playing at? How much tweaking are you willing to do in your modern titles? All of these things come into play. Now, what I'd love for you to do is go to my website. It's in the description below, along with the slew of benchmarks and titles and posts and whatever that you can have in this topic of conversation. So, But go to my article and go vote for which graphics card you think is the best in this space. And what this is gonna do and what this is gonna allow for is it's not only gonna open up a, a topic of conversation, but it's also gonna allow us to see kind of what you think. And believe it or not, the viewers of our YouTube channel are every bit as smart as any of us working behind the scenes here. So we'd love to have your feedback. Uh, if you guys like this video, help me out by pressing that like and subscribe button. Uh, that helps me out a ton. But also, if you really, really wanna help me, leave a comment in the comment section below. That's the way that you can best support me now. Again, like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.